Welcome back to the Chem OG. Today we're going to take a look at a strategic way by which we can think about phase changes. And in particular, what I'm going to talk about are phase change points. So what's a phase change point? Let's divide that up into uh, two different parts. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is a phase change. And a phase change is a transformation from one physical state to another physical state of the same compound and really what's changing our intermolecular bonds. And so, you know, the one that's nearest and dearest to our hearts are phase changes that are due to water. So if an ice cube melts on a hot day, in ice, water is H2O. As a liquid, water is still H2O. So it's still two hydrogens bonded to an oxygen. So nothing changed in terms of the bonds within the molecule. The big thing that did change is that the water molecules, the way they're bonded to their neighbors, has changed. And so in ice, those bonds are a lot more rigid, whereas in liquid water, they're a little bit more fluid, for lack of a better term. And so when we talk about a phase change, it's about that transformation, that change in intermolecular bonding. And when we talk about a point, here in particular what we're referring to is a temperature. And so examples of phase change points are going to include things like the melting point, the freezing point, the boiling point, and so on and so forth. So that's what I mean by a phase change point. Phase change, whether, you know, whatever that phase change may be, uh, and then point refers to a certain temperature. And so the phase change point, given a particular pressure, is going to be the temperature at which that phase change happens. And so the substance then, because the phase change is happening at that temperature, it's not happening below that temperature, it's not happening above that temperature, it's happening at that particular temperature, that means that the substance needs to be in equilibrium between phases, right? When you're crossing a border between uh, one city and another or between one county and another, technically that border doesn't belong to either side. So you're not really in one city, you're not really in another. The border, the right, that imaginary line doesn't belong to either side, it's right between. And so when we're right at that phase change point, it means that we're not really one phase, we're not really another, we could be either or, right? And if we're getting literal here, right, driving in a car on a border between cities, a portion of your car is in one city and a portion of your car is in another city, you're not really in one city or another, you're kind of in that in-between zone. And so a substance is an equilibrium between phases whenever it reaches that phase change point. And so, for example, the melting point represents the following. If our ice cube is melting, it means it's transitioning over from solid to liquid. So that means that at the melting point, that water is in equilibrium between the solid phase and the liquid phase. So let's say we take another uh, phase transition. So let's say we're talking about freezing instead. So freezing, when a substance freezes, it goes from liquid to solid. So that means that I am going from liquid water to ice and the freezing point is the point at which I'm in equilibrium between the liquid and the solid phases. So if you pause and take a look at the two statements that we just mentioned, how we describe the melting point and how we describe the freezing point, you'll notice I said the same thing for both, right? In both those instances, I said we're at equilibrium between the solid and the liquid phases. And the conclusion we can logically draw then is that because the melting point and the freezing point represent an equilibrium between liquid and solid, they must be the same exact point. And you already know that intuitively. For example, since we keep talking about water, the melting point of water at sea level is zero degrees Celsius. But you also know that the freezing point of water at sea level is zero degrees Celsius. So anytime you have opposite phase changes strategically, you can always think of them as the same point. Right. So on an exam, if you're given the melting point of a substance, you don't need to be given the freezing point. You should already know what the freezing point is. It is indeed the melting point. And so whenever we're talking about opposite phase changes strategically, you want to think about them as the same exact point. And if certain uh, changes occur to one of those phase change points, it must be happening to the other. So one of the things that we talked about in terms of colligative properties is that we took a look at freezing point depression. Well, I could have easily just said melting point depression because the freezing point and the melting point are the same exact thing. 
So opposite phase changes are going to happen at the same temperature. We already saw that with melting and freezing point. We can also extend that to the other uh, pairs of phase changes. So for example, the boiling point of water you know to be 100 degrees Celsius. Well, that means that you also know the condensation point of water is identical to it, and it's also 100 degrees Celsius. So again, you don't need to be given the, uh, the temperatures of each of the phase changes in detail, all you need to be given is one, and then you can figure out what that point is for the opposite phase change. It's the exact same thing. And if you're at a point at which your substance can sublime, its deposition point is exactly the same. So opposite phase changes, they occur at the exact same temperature. And a similar phenomenon happens with enthalpies of phase changes. And so when you go through and you measure how much energy is required to be able to break down a mole of a substance, well, whether you're breaking bonds, right? The bonds that you break are the same ones that you're gonna to have to reform in going through the opposite phase change. So for instance, when you're melting stuff down, you gotta break bonds in order to take that solid into the liquid phase. Well, if you go from liquid back to solid, you have to reform those same bonds that you broke and that releases an equal magnitude of energy. And so for that reason, the delta H of fusion is equal to the negative delta H of freezing. The delta H of vaporization is equal to negative delta H of condensation. And the delta H of sublimation is equal to negative delta H of deposition. Anytime you have opposite phase changes, the thermodynamics that are happening are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So I'll go back to that same point. On an exam question, you could be given the delta H of fusion, and then for the calculation, what you would need is the delta H of freezing or of crystallization. Well, you don't need to be given the delta H of freezing explicitly. If you already have the delta H of fusion, those are going to be opposite in sign to one another with the same magnitude. So that's a little bit of strategy that you can use to be able to conceptualize a lot of the things that are happening. If it's easier to be able to understand what's happening to the freezing point of a substance, awesome. The same exact effect is gonna be happening to the melting point. When you take a look at phase change points, the ones for opposite phase changes are the exact same point. Thank you so much for attending today's lesson. Please take a look at that subscribe button, click it if you have not done so already, and please hit that like button as well. Hope to see you at the next lesson. Happy Strategy Monday.